Um, and I think uh, XFCE uses uh, Seahorse as their default. Uh, you can just type, sorry, I know in Mint you can just type in um, the keys uh, and it'll start bringing it up. You can type in Seahorse and it'll bring it up. Um, but if you don't have it installed and you want to use it, uh, you can do the, the sudo app get install Seahorse. It's fairly easy. And the same thing with uh, KDE, it's KGPG. And again, it's an app get install if you, as long as you're using a Debian system. Or you use a yum install for Fedora and Red Hat system systems. Uh, or you can use the command line tools, which is the GBG key, uh, keys. And for Mint, it was already installed. But again, it's an app get to get it installed. Well, GPG is used for signing packages and stuff, so it's, it's kind of a base part of the operating system these days. Okay. Right, because the app, app uses it to things to verify the signatures on, on, yeah. on, on, yeah, on it does. packages. Right, even on uh, uh, PDAs, they're signed, yeah, so yeah. you can... Yeah, so the, so the bare tools are already in there for you. <coughs> right. So if you want to create a key, in the command line, you use the gbg keygen, and it's going to go through and walk you through a lot of steps. Things like your name, your password, uh, a uh, well, the password is the last part, I think. but um, and it asks for uh, description. Be careful what you put there because that's publicly seen. It's not just something for yourself. So uh, I inadvertently made myself a uh, a handle, and uh, but then I thought. I decided to keep it as Tony the Great. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, but it's other ways. Like if you have multiple keys, or somebody else has a key similar, a similar name to yours, and there's a key out there, you can tell somebody it's with this description on it. So, like Kevin O'Brien has his, and it's uh, his GPG is fun or encryption is fun. Uh, so I know to look for that one when I look for his. Uh, and then you want to. Add your in your bash RC. You want to add this line to uh, put it in your uh, your uh, what's it called? Uh, environmental variable. Yeah. Variables. Oh, yeah. so, uh, so what it happens is when you you put your key ID, which you look up with this list keys, and um, it goes through this whole list here, and it'll show you that my key is this right here. So what it shows here is that my public key, which is using 2048-bit uh, encryption, is that, that's the last eight of the full key fingerprint. Uh, and then it shows the date it was created, my user ID, and my description. Uh, so this is my key. If anybody wanted to um, go out and find my key, that's how you can find it. You can either use the last eight, the key ID, or the fingerprint. Uh, you can search by name. Uh, so, uh, on, what the key, on the key servers? Yeah, on the key servers. Now, I, I, I'm confused. Can you go back to that last slide for a quick minute? Sure. Okay. The key DB47TTEE, you have it down there in white. But up in green, you have that plus more. What's so? This is the key ID. That's the right size. here. This it's the same thing right here. Yeah. But so what it's showing is this. It's saying it's a public key using 2048 encryption. RSA. I assume the RSA. Oh, yeah, RSA. R I believe so. With that's the key ID, and then <coughs> that's the. Okay. A date created. If you, if you did a list of keys and you had a bunch of keys in your key ring, you get a whole list of those. Yeah, you see a whole list of them. And you yeah, you can have you can have multiple keys for yourself. You can have one for each email address, or you can put multiple emails on one key. Okay, but the, and you can have but, keys for other people. Right. Yeah, and your key ring or uh, it would okay, be it all your keys. Right. Out of those three th three or four things you mentioned, which is the one you would use to encrypt your your File it's the whole key. Yeah, this just is a description of what keys are on your system. Okay. It's so just telling you. It's so you can see what yeah. keys you have. 
And this, so it, this isn't a specifically, but what I'm, what I'm saying here with this export key gen, whenever you, every time you use the command line, all you have to do is put the dollar sign uh, GPG key, and it automatically uses that specific key that you have. It's like it's identifying your default key. Right, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's setting up your default key. And it's similar to this right here. You lost me. You're doing something of a That's all I got. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm going to get more into the GUI okay. stuff. So if you're not a command line person, just hold on a bit, and then I'll uh, explain a little bit more. Uh, I mean, right here, like on the command line, if you want to send the key to the key servers, this would be the command you use. So it's say, using GPG, send the keys to the key server, which in this case it's Ubuntu. And then you're saying use that key that I put in that last, from that last slide. Uh, because like you said, you can have multiple keys in your key ring. You want this to be your default key. And instead of typing out that long, or memorizing and typing out your key ID, the eight, that you can type this instead, GPG key. Uh, it also makes it handy for uh, scripting. If everybody does it, then you can just say, here's a script, and it uses their key instead of yours. I could have like fail safe servers also. Sorry? I mean, uh, normally it's one central server or this is? No, actually key, key servers are uh, similar to how DNS works where it gets propagated across the, the world. Key servers propagate your keys across. So you publish your key to one server and it gets propagated across to everybody. So because I send mine to the SKS server, th then uh, you know, Jim can go over to gpg.com or MIT offer their key and pull my public key off their server. After some amount of time. It's, yeah. I think it's Probably like 15 15. minutes. It's not okay. long. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's not long because I published it, I waited a little bit the same day and I went and checked and it was on multiple servers. Cool. With everybody in the world using this and only eight characters, how many clashes are there? Well, everybody that's using the same key. The, the eight character at the end, the key ID, that's uh, basically for what's on your system. I, he's thinking that you can have multiple, key. you have multiple keys, but you're not going to have millions of keys on your system. No, but so, what I mean in the, in the key know, server. Yeah, I know on the key server. He thinks that's the entire key. No, no, it's just an idea. Key. No, it's what's your key ID, and your key ID is only it's a the short, last bit it's a, of the key fingerprint. It's a short it's fingerprint of it, and then yes, yeah, but. There are collisions on that. You should never use that to identify anyone. Right, yeah, because there can be clashes, it's best to identify by the, the fingerprint, uh, which I'll show you in a little bit. I'll talk about the fingerprint. Okay. Um, it's just, it's easier if you read it off the phone, just look at the last eight. It's kind of like with MAC addresses on computers. You don't read off the entire MAC address, you just read off the last a little bit. Um, Anyway, if you want to back up your keys, this is how you go about it. Uh, because your private key, if you lose that, then you cannot decrypt. You can't use your key anymore. You have to create new. So you want to have backups of it. Uh, and you want to keep that backup secure. Because if somebody else gets your backup, <laughs> then they can, do, they can act as you. And you don't want that. They can decrypt all your messages. They can send out messages saying, I'm authentic, when it's actually they're not. Uh, so this is how you go about it. Again, using the uh, PGPG. Uh, and then restoring, you can import the keys back in. So uh, say you have multiple systems. I have a desktop and I have a laptop and I want my keys on both. Then you can export it from one and import it back into the other. Uh, it, it's, yeah, it creates this creates this right here, the secret key, or whatever you want to call it. <coughs> you can give this any key you want, dot key, and then you can take that file over to someone else. But again, if somebody else gets it, if you leave it on your flash drive and you lose your flash drive, somebody else gets it, then they can do whatever you want. So you got to be careful with that. Um, I know uh, one of the GUI programs for your phone, for Android, is AGPG, AGP. Whenever you import your key into that, it automatically, or one of the defaults is delete your key after import. 
so that it's not just sitting there on your SD card while you're waiting. Uh, so now here, if you want to private or you want to encrypt keys, you don't have to use your key to encrypt using GPG. You can use it for you can use a password. Uh, so like this right here, this is using not using your key. And with the dash C, it just means uh, I forget what G C means, but, but it means you use a password instead of your key. So then anybody you can give that password to anybody, and they can decrypt it. Uh, it, it doesn't have to use the key system to encrypt and decrypt. Um, but then here is using minus the dash D. Minus C stands for cipher. Cipher, okay. Then the dash E uses your key. And this will encrypt it only for you. If you want to, uh, because you're not saying who you're encrypting it for, then it only encrypts it for you, only you can decrypt it. You have to have your private key then to decrypt it. Um, and then to decrypt it, use the dash D. Using someone else's public key. No, it's using your own public. So you're basically encrypting it to yourself, <coughs> and then only you can decrypt it. Instead of me encrypting it so you can decrypt it, you're just doing it with yourself. Kind of like and so if you want to safely store something on your hard drive, although your keys are on the same hard drive, so. <laughs> right, but then your key also has a password, so. There's two pieces. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to use cloud backup, right? You want to encrypt your stuff, set it to the cloud backup, not True. the key. Okay, so then everything up there is encrypted, right? And then if you need to pull it back, you can just decrypt the cloud it would, be, it would be good if you were worried about your laptop being stolen and people being able to get to the information. Well, that, no, it's a little bit different because your laptop still, or the key is still on your laptop. But if it's stolen, it's possible for them to get it. So you would want something else to encrypt your home folder uh, or the entire drive. Uh, and then that would keep somebody from, if they stole it, keep them from getting to it. And we're using this also to encrypt the drive? No, this GPG does not do a whole drive this was for encryption. Between two people? Yes, this, this is for files. Files, files uh, and yeah, single files that you're sending back and forth with emails. Or, but this right here is for a single file. Just say, you know, this big.txt. You know, this is a message you want to send to your lawyer. You don't want anybody else but your lawyer to get it. Then you would use public key.